Greetings friends and Firebirds fans and welcome to the Fire and Ice podcast presented by Desert Willow Golf Resort. Fire and Ice, the official podcast of your Coachella Valley Firebirds of the American Hockey League. Coming to you from Palm Desert, California, a mere Max McCormick hat trick away from the Bird Barn of Acrisure Arena. I'm your host, Judd Spicer. Along with this endeavor, also again have the privilege and the pleasure of serving as your Firebirds insider for this second season of CB Hockey. Those articles may be found online at your home and your hub for all things CB Firebirds. That's cbfirebirds.com. Go on there. Click away. You can find everything from team, roster, merchandise, community information, and certainly tickets to Calder Cup Championship Finals Firebirds games taking place over the course of this week at Acrisure Arena. Might I also suggest downloading the very handy CV Firebirds app on your mobile device. Also a great way to get your Firebirds tickets, parking, and everything happening yonder way at Acrisure Arena here in Palm Desert. Per the presenting sponsor of this endeavor, Desert Willow Golf Resort, also right here in sunny Palm Desert, California. You can make tee times online for the Mountain View and or Firecliff courses, although per the latter, the Firecliff undergoing a summer, uh, summer rather renovation right now. But get those tee times for the Mountain View at DesertWillow.com. What I also suggest poking around at the awesome and on-site Palm Desert Golf Academy. Got all manner of summer clinics going on, including some awesome stuff for the junior golfer in your life. Per Desert Willow, per this program, per the Valley as a whole, yeah, the dudes at Desert Willow, they're paying attention to that T-sheet right now. They got stuff to do at their golf facility. But all of us, yeah, we're enveloped in what's going on right now in these Calder Cup Finals here to further discuss as much on this episode, it's an all-star cast. It's a media roundtable, mid-series media roundtable episode. Going to welcome, or welcome back, I should say, all three of these gentlemen. Tim O'Brien, he's the lead sports anchor over at NBC Palm Springs. Also, your in-arena host at Acrisure. By the way, I don't like when I say, when I introduce Tim, I don't like saying your in-arena host at Acrisure Arena. That sounds a little messy. Henceforth, I'm just going to say in-arena host at Acrisure. Anyway, great to have Tim back. Look forward to visiting with him. Patrick Williams coming back to the show. Been a spell. Looking forward to having Patrick in the roundtable. He, of course, is your features writer at AHL.com. Does a lot of hockey writing as well at Points Beyond. Andrew John returning to the Fire and Ice podcast. Andrew, of course, sports reporter, covers the Firebirds over at the Desert Sun newspaper. All right, Firebirds friends, this being recorded between games three and four of these Calder Cup finals, respectively, hatching the rematch, Birds versus Bears doing it again for a second consecutive season through three games. As the rabid fan base already knows, Birds lead the series 2-1 by virtue of a 4-3 win in Hershey in game one, followed by a, I'm going to call it 2-5 loss to the Bears at the Giants Center in Pennsylvania in Game 2, came back to the desert after not having played a postseason game here this month. It has been such a strange, albeit undoubtedly successful, postseason thus far, but a very strange uh, postseason schedule-wise, with the Birds having 44 days across this postseason calendar. This is just in the playoffs, friends. 44 days of non-game days. Anyway, Game 3, it was excellent. It was total birds hockey, playing fast, playing north. A 6-2 win coming back to Acrisure Arena for the first postseason game of this month. And now, with the 2-1 edge in the series, can really feel that enthusiasm bubbling throughout the desert floor. You can feel that excitement rising across these desert sands. The finish line, yeah, it's in sight. That brass ring, oh, you could almost touch it. Still work to be done, and said work will happen as we turn our attentions toward the schedule, remaining schedule for these Calder Cup championship playoffs, CV versus Hershey. Game four, this Thursday night here in Palm Desert, California. That's Thursday, June 20th. 
Hershey at CV. That's a 7 p.m. puck drop. Should probably also add, received a, a press release uh, within uh, minutes, actually, of recording this show. Pat Monahan, yeah, he's the front man for Train, along with his son, Rock Monahan. That's a cool name. They're going to perform a father son, uh, seemingly a duet, national anthem, ahead of Thursday's puck drop. Uh, in addition, uh, Abby Carter, she, of course, the American Idol winner. By way of Indio, Abby performed a uh, terrific national anthem of her own recently at the Acrisure Arena. She is going to be back in the Bird's Barn. She will have a quote-unquote, according to said release, a special performance during the game. Abby Carter going to be back Thursday night for Game 4. Game 5, it is necessary. The asterisk, asterisk I know I was going to butcher that at some point, that is removed from Game 5, taking place... Also in Palm Desert, Saturday, June 22, Bears at Birds. That is a 6 p.m. puck drop, friends. Not 7, mind you, 6. That's 6 p.m. Pacific on Saturday. And then, if needed, look, we hope we hope this doesn't happen. Yeah, we bias on this program. We don't want this series to go back to Hershey. We want to clinch here. We want to win in five games, just like I predicted in my Firebirds Insider article at cvfirebirds.com. We want to get it done here. But... If you don't, if needed, the series will then move back east. Game 6 would take place Monday, June 24. CV at Hershey, that would be a 4 p.m. Pacific uh, puck drop, rather. And then also, if necessary, a deciding Game 7 would be played next Wednesday, June 26. CV at Hershey, also a 4 p.m. start time if said game is ultimately necessary. All right, brief digression for our Firebirds freeze frame segment before we get to this episode's Calder Cup Championship Finals media roundtable. Firebirds now uh, 7-0, by the way, at home during these playoffs. Cumulative postseason record now 12-3 in the postseason. 16 different birds all told with at least five points in this postseason. Team is led by 13 all told, from John Hayden, that's four, uh, good for fourth in the American Hockey League for the playoffs. John having himself an exceptional postseason. 13 points from Hayden, 12 apiece across the playoffs from Messrs. Fleury and Hughes. 11 points each from Captain Max McCormick, Devin Shore, and Cole Lind. Andrew Podorowski, will we see him back in these Calder Cup Championship Finals? Did not play Game 3 at Acrisure Arena. Will we see him hopefully uh, Thursday for Game 4? Fingers are crossed. Potsy with 10 points in these Calder Cup playoffs. Per the Hershey series and these Calder Cup championship finals specifically, yeah, the new daddy, Max McCormick, done his newborn baby daughter proud with a hat trick in the Birds' 6-2 Game 3 win. Big stick taps to Max. That, by the way, was the first hat trick in the Calder Cup Championship Finals in 15 years. Hasn't happened since, uh, hadn't happened rather, since 1999. Uh, He's got three goals on the series. Ryan Winterton, three goals in the series versus Hershey. The aforementioned John Hayden, he got those two goals in uh, back in Game 1. He's got two on the series. Uh, In Game 2, in that loss to Hershey, uh, a goal apiece for Luke Henman and Marion Studenich. And then in the Game 3 win, a goal apiece for Shane Wright. Awesome goal from Shane. And newcomer Leighton Road also got himself on the board for his first career playoff goal. Leighton uh, again with that goal in Game 3. Between the pipes, Chris Drieger continues to chart somewhere between super solid and spectacular in these Calder Cup playoffs. Chris now 12-3 in the postseason with a 2.46 goals against, 9.17 save percentage versus Hershey. Chris 2-1 and one on the series, seen that GAA metric rise just a little bit. And hey, Hershey's a good team. Goals against for Chris in the, the Hershey series, 3.05, save percentage, 0.857. All right, that's going to do it for the Firebirds freeze frame portion of this program. Let us now segue to this episode's mid-series Calder Cup Championship Finals media roundtable. All right, Firebirds friends, as prefaced to the crux of this hockey season, the Calder Cup Championship Finals between games three and four out here in Palm Desert, it's a cavalcade of stars. 
It's an all-star media roundtable cast. Welcome back to the Fire and Ice podcast. Tim O'Brien, Patrick Williams, and Andrew John, all of whom I, I, I gave you their titles earlier in the show. So you, so, so you know what they're, what they're doing, what they're capable of. Patrick Williams, he is based in Hershey, Pennsylvania. He is connecting with us now from the opposite coast. I ask all you guys, Patrick, I'll start with you. Let's get right to it, man. Through three games, Birds obviously up 2-1. Your headline thus far for this Calder Cup Championship Series. This is the best I've seen Coachella Valley look all year. Um, they, they, uh, you know, I think anybody that knows this team knows that they've had they've had some impressive moments all season. Uh, but right now they're just firing on all cylinders. And I mean, you're also up against a Hershey team that's really, really banged up right now. Uh, they're 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 kind of fight fighting it on their end. So uh, it's kind of a bad combination right now if you're the Hershey Bears uh you're 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 catching the Firebirds at their best uh, you're uh, a team that went to a seven game battle with Cleveland and 48 hours later has to jump into this this series with this group waiting for them just and you know I think we we all know the Firebirds have kind of been waiting for this series for the past what 52 weeks um it, it, you know it, they haven't hidden very much uh, from the idea that this really kind of was a burr under their saddle, uh, you know, from last June 21st on. Yeah, almost. We are discussing this almost a year to the day. I think it's two calendar days shy of when mm-hmm. the season ended last year. Andrew John of the Desert Sun will bring the same question to you, sir. Yeah, I just think that this is the series. This is the Firebird series to lose at this point, right? Um, not only did they win one of the two on the road to start the series, um, they can finish this at home by winning these next two games. And this is at a place where they have not lost yet this season um, at, at Akersher Arena. Uh, some of the Hershey players talked about the crowd last night, how, you know, just nuts it was. They, they're they no strangers to that in their own building. But you could tell that the players were really uh, just getting kind of used to the atmosphere here uh, from the Bears side. And, Firebirds uh, players have already talked uh, openly about how much this home uh, ice really energizes them. Uh, So I fully expect there to be a ton of energy the next few games. And again, it's the Firebirds series to lose. I think they um, would really blow a great opportunity if they lose one of these two at home and it goes back to Hershey. Yeah, and per Andrew's point, uh, with Bird's Game 3 win, improved, of course, to uh, 7-0 at home during this year's postseason. Tim O'Brien, what's uh, being printed above the fold in your mind? Yeah, uh, first off, guys, good to see you, Andrew. Patrick, great to see you again. Good to hear your voice. Um, yeah, look, I think last year, right, Hershey and, and the Firebirds, this rematch, you look at uh, the Firebirds on the flip side, a little banged up, exhausted, played a ton of playoff games, still took it to seven games and to overtime. Uh, the complete opposite this year. Right now you've got a banged up Hershey team, played a, a few more games. The Firebirds only continue to get stronger. Uh, that first period, Dan even said it last night, their fastest period of the season, physically and literally. I don't think we had a whistle till about six uh, minutes left in the period. Um, so it's a good problem. It's a good place to be in and um, just just finish it here. I think you still have to respect Hershey because of their their makeup and who they are. Todd Nelson's a heck of a coach. And so you don't want to send that thing back to Hershey even up 3-2 if that's what it came down to. So So finish it here. Yeah, and per Tim's point and what uh, Coach said last night after the game, that first period and basically until it was a fait accompli, until it was a foregone conclusion last night, it was like the birds were driving a Maserati. And th- this will sound mean to Hershey, but it was like I, I drive a, hundred, a Hyundai Elantra, and then it's like Hershey was driving a Hyundai last night. We played with so much jump. They played so fast to consider that we are now trending toward the month of July and the birds had that much much jump. That first period was incredible last night, and they basically were able to keep up that pace throughout the game until all was said and done. Patrick Williams of the uh, AHL.com, we're going to bring it back to you. Uh, player or players thus far that has jumped out for you, or you mentioned some of the injuries, Patrick, maybe an omission of a player that you think has been most poignant in this series to date. Well, I think certainly for Hershey, I mean, well, to, to, to jump on that, that analogy with the Hyundai, I mean, the, the Hyundai is leaking a lot of oil right now. Um, 
they're down three top defensemen, Lucas Johansson, Aaron Ness, um, and Vince Iorio. Um, that means, you know, it was, a, a, I think it would have been a pretty even series head to head. Everybody was healthy. Uh, obviously Potterowski's out of, for, for Coachella for, for the time being, but um, you take three top D off uh, any blue line, it's going to make a difference. And I think, I think your point about the, the rest factors really big here. Yeah. We are into to July or almost July here, but uh, Hershey went that, that seven game series with Cleveland, Cleveland's physical, heavy pounding team. Um, that took a lot. You, you can really see that drain Hershey. Uh, and so I think, I think for Hershey right now, Hunter Shepard would be the key. If he can somehow, I mean, I think he's been fine in this series, but if he can steal a game or two here, uh, I think it's almost essential for Hershey if they're going to make this a long series because there's really, I mean, there's nothing that you're seeing from, from Coachella right now that they're slowing down. I mean, they're, they are, like I said earlier, they're as good as I've seen them all year. I mean, they, they, they took Hershey part last night, quite frankly. Uh, that was probably the, the worst team I've seen Hershey play all season. For mention a specific player or players and uh, uh, a reference to Hunter Shepard, goals against in this series, 4.05 after mm-hmm. a 1.76, a near historic 1.76 in the regular season. Save percentage, a mere 0.870. And this for the winner of the Bastion, the goalie, of the year in the AHL, the guy, he, he, he makes some of the exemplary saves. He makes some of the exciting saves, some of the crazy saves. Birds have had a lot of good rebound action. In game three, Shane Wright's goal was beautiful, but some of the mm-hmm. other goals, they were just downright hustle, floor check, dirty goals. And yep. a lot of coaches love those really more than the pretty ones sometimes. Uh, Birds yeah. got it going against Hunter Shepard last night, basically throughout the series. Turn it to you, Andrew, John, your thoughts, specific player or players that really jumped out to you on either side. Yeah, I mean, just to uh, hit on what Patrick was saying, you know, uh, last year in the in this final series, we saw Joey Decord have some real signature performances because his blue line wasn't as good as uh, Chris Drieger's is this year. And with Shepard's blue line a little banged up, you know, he's he's got to have to have a, a signature performance at some point, I think uh, these next two games to, to keep Hershey in it. For Coachella Valley, the guy I've really uh, been impressed by in this series is Ryan Winterton, this rookie forward. Because remember, in the first 10 game, ten or 11 games or so of this postseason, he only had one goal. First, the last two games, he's now had three goals in two games. And he's a guy who, along with Shane Wright and Jacob Melanson and Logan Morrison, this rookie class, uh, that I think they need to play a role in this series as they have been, because we know that the the veteran guys are going to be uh, be the guys that are going to be targeted by the the Bears. And uh, but I think one of the things that's been so dangerous all season about Coachella Valley is that they've got these young guys who you might not expect can play at a high level, and suddenly they hit you with a two goal game or something like that. That really. Uh, can surprise some people. And and I think that can keep uh, the firebirds in this series. If uh, you know, if they're ever in danger. Yeah. We saw a young Leighton road last night, Minnesota zone, White Bear Lake uh, spelling, essentially Andrew Podorowski in game three, got his first playoff goal and looked great. Wasn't just the goal. He looked fast. He looked fresh. He looked very confident throughout the game. There's just another name for you. Speaking toward the birds depth. Tim O'Brien of NBC Palm Springs, your thoughts on a guy or guys that are really jumping out to you thus far? Yeah, the easy answer is Max, right? The captain for the hat trick last night. It doesn't look like he wants to take uh, another loss in the series. He wants to take the cup home. I, I wanted to bring up Leighton Road because I I spoke with Bilesma yesterday at morning skate. and I said there was a point in game two where Leighton Road off the rush just blew past the defender. His shot was just an absolute rocket. I said, where the heck did that come from? You do stuff like that, you're going to stay in this lineup. And Dan said, yeah, yeah, that's that's a good way to stay in. And then you see his performance last night. He was noticeable on the ice. And that's just, a, you know, I know Dan's not a player, but put him in the mix here for that, too, for the standout. He knows the buttons to push. He, he just knows who to put in his lineup. Because I don't think Yanni Newman played too poorly. The mm-hmm. moment might have been a little too big for him. But 
uh, to just throw a, a Leighton Road in there who hadn't played all year just to, to come in and, and have two of the biggest games of his career and two of the biggest games of his career. Uh, he's passed with flying colors. And then on the flip side, I you got to give Hunter Shepard, you know, the respect and credit, right? He stole game two, and why can't he steal another one or two? He's that good. It was interesting to see, though, last night. I felt like he – they pulled him, right, I think maybe just to kind of get him out of his head and, and turn the page and move on to the next one. But uh, give the assist to the crowd. He, he was he was rattled a bit. There was something off there that, that wasn't right, and we haven't seen that from him, right? That's that's not his style. So, um, But don't count him out by any means. A goalie can get hot again and, and run this thing. So, One more name, and I want to ask you this one specifically, Patrick, uh, by virtue of covering the league and living in Hershey, Dylan McElrath, I think he's in his 13th year of pro hockey, might be nicknamed, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, The Undertaker. He, of course, took out uh, Andrew Podorowski for this series. McElrath, by the way, 706 total regular season and playoff games in the AHL combined with 1,337 penalty minutes to show for those games. He actually came into the postgame presser after game three, had himself cleaned up, didn't look, I mean, I guess he still did look kind of mean. And intimidating. He's a big dude with a big beard and a big history of chirping and getting in people's faces and penalties and fights. I kind of feel like he is another key. And I, I want to hear your thoughts, Patrick. If this guy can get under the bird's skin, it's going to have an impact. But last night, Jacob Melanson and the rest of the crew, they were matching him chirp for chirp. Yeah, you know, I talk about uh, Macrath a lot, you know. He's one of the few players today that I I could see fitting in 20 years ago in the AHL, right? Where it was just kind of no rules. Uh, it was <laughs> it was anything went. It was uh, you know guys putting up 300 penalty minutes a year. He would have fit in perfectly in that era. In, in this era, I think sometimes he's very willing, but uh, there's just not often uh, much of a dance partner, uh, somebody that's willing to engage him. Uh, and so I think for him, that's uh, that can be frustrating at times, right? Like he's a throwback player. Uh, he's he's a good fighter. He's tough. He's physical. Like he plays that old '90s, early 2000s style of hockey that you you know is is pretty much extinct these days. And so I think he, yeah, someone like him needs to really take the bull by the horns here in this series start to drag this series away from the, uh, you know, the skill side of the spectrum, pull it over toward a little bit more of a, a mean, nasty, you know, knockdown, drag out type of uh, uh, a series. Uh, that doesn't fit Coachella as well, right? Like right now, Coachella's, they're not only playing exceptionally well, they're, they're dictating the style of the series. They're saying, this is going to be a skill series. It's going to be a speed series. Uh, we're going to play it our way and, and Hershey really, if Hershey tries to play that way, they'll lose every time. Right. So I think for, for someone like the McElrath, just, yeah, make this a, a mean, ugly, nasty series is, is I, probably Hershey's best bet at this point. Friends, you're tuning in to the fire and ice podcast presented by Desert Willow Golf Resort Cul uh, Calder Cup Championship finals, mid series media roundtable, Tim O'Brien. See Palm Springs. He's the lead sports anchor there. He joins in. Also, the in arena host at Acrisure, Patrick Williams, features writer at AHL.com. Does a lot of hockey writing as well at Points Beyond. And Andrew John, sports reporter covering the Firebirds for the Desert Sun. Tim, I'll bring it back to you. It might seem kind of lame to talk about some of the logistics and the dates and the travel, but it has had so much to do with the narrative of this postseason, certainly for the Firebirds, that it's worth broaching to date. Just in the playoffs alone, as of today, the Firebirds have had 44 days in the playoffs where they have not played a game. Of course, we've got the well-documented travel east to Hershey instead of coming home. Uh, and then Hershey's travel with the New England Patriots charter plane uh, with their families and such while the Birds waited another day. And all of a sudden, things are, after so much waiting, things are going very fast again. Just had the one day between games for the travel and now just one day between games three and four. And it's going to go on like this for as long as the series plays out. I mean, to you, is this part of the storyline, Tim? 
Yeah, I think in the beginning with that 12 day gap between the end of the regular season and that first game in Calgary, right? They Calgary, they come out, lay an egg 4 1, maybe their worst game in about two months at that point. Uh, and Dan had mentioned, look, you know, there, until you get your legs under you for playoff hockey, maybe it'll, that had something to do with it. But once you're in it and you're in that routine of playoff style hockey, it'll all uh, play out. So I think it puts to, to rest the rust versus rest argument. Uh, it has benefited the Firebirds. Uh, tenfold, I think, staying out in Milwaukee and then, or uh, staying in Milwaukee to go to Hershey and then getting an Airbnb for the boys in a couple of days and enjoying themselves. And every player we talked to yesterday loved it. They thought it was the greatest thing. Uh, they loved it, being together and, and being on this journey together. So I think it's absolutely benefited uh, having this much rest and being able to focus in between and get your practice in. Uh, this is the first series, though, right? I think all playoffs and it's every other day. So, uh, Let's go. All systems go. They're in a routine, and, and let's finish strong. Andrew John, last season, whether it be at Acrisure Arena or for any of the watch parties, you and I often uh, observe the games together, sat next to one another 26 times over, 26 playoff uh, game playoff marathon last season. This year, no matter how, even if the Calder Cup final stretches to seven games, the Birds will not reach the 20-game threshold. The most we could play this year is 19. It's been a different dynamic and a different meter and feel this season. To you, has this played a big part in the playoffs throughout the the Firebirds run? Yeah, I certainly think it has. I mean, I think for those of us who've been around the team for the last two years, we would we would all agree um, that this team is just better, uh, more talented from top to bottom on the, the lineup. Um, certainly. Uh, there's there's a lot there's a lot that goes into that, but they're also like you said you know benefiting from from the rest. It's funny because I didn't quite I guess I didn't quite realize how much of a toll that 26 games last postseason had taken on these guys. Uh, they didn't really talk about it much. Didn't use it as an excuse when they lost Game Seven, uh, but we've seen this year them just feel so much more energetic this late in the season and so it's hard to deny that that has played a role patrick williams who covered this league for a long time we know that hey sometimes there's arena scheduling issues sometimes there are cost issues with charter planes and things like that even those things considered patrick does this kind of feel strange different aberrant from the lens of the firebirds and the way that their postseason has scheduled out N not too too much, no. Uh, uh, you know, that's, it's one of the ironies. I think as a top team, like you get that that buy right after the regular season, that ten to fourteen day break. We saw it, uh, like you mentioned, uh, trip up, uh, trip them up in game one against Calgary. It, it really tripped up Providence, for example. Uh, you know that they, they for the second year in a row they had that long break. They went in cold against Hartford, lost that series, looked completely discombobulated right you know you know from that 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 carryover i mean you go you go down the stretch right march april you're playing you know three four games a week and then you sit for 10 to 12 days and sure you practice but it's not the same um and then you jump right into a playoff series that that that's that's a challenge right and uh now we're seeing the flip side of that right where hershey got dragged into this seven game slugfest with cleveland and build up all this animosity with cleveland over seven games and then had to flip a switch in 48 hours and, and go up against a team that had been waiting there for six days, just you know, ready to go. Right. You know, like you mentioned the, the, the Airbnb and then kind of all that, 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 uh, that team bonding that they had. Uh, it, it's interesting that now it really actually feels like the playoffs. I think, you know, you're playing every other day. Um, you know, there's not these long breaks. I mean, Hershey and, and up until at least the, the conference final there, their schedules mirrored each other quite a bit. There was that long gap. They got through the first couple of rounds relatively efficiently. And, you know, uh, the, you know, Dan Biles most mentioned it was like 11 and a nine day break and then a six day break. It was very similar to for Hershey up until the Cleveland series. So yeah, now we're kind of seeing, you know, uh, that, that time payoff though, that, that Coachella had the six days where they could just get away and, and chill out and uh, go off into the to the wilds wilderness of uh, rural Pennsylvania <laughs> to the Airbnb and, <laughs> and fish and, and do whatever they did there and yeah just uh, get away from it. So uh, while meanwhile Hershey had to play 
uh, four overtime games and just go up against, like I said earlier, a, a real heavy physical Cleveland team that I think really took their pound of flesh in the end. Uh, you know, Cleveland lost that series, but they, they, they left the mark for sure. Gents, for those of us that are, we'll say bias toward the CV end of the spectrum, and that would undoubtedly be three of the four of us, um, optimism abounds, surely, uh, after the Firebirds performance, not just in game three, but really throughout this series. They've all played through Hershey throughout this series. My optimism is a little cautious because look back at what happened last year, and we were all flying high, scored nine goals, I want to say, in those first two games. It's a zero goals for Hershey. I remember looking at Patrick when we were meeting for the first time, and Patrick, you were kind of shaking your head, saying, Hershey had not seen anything like this all year long. And then the tail turned. Then the narrative changed. Then we went to the East Coast. We didn't win any games there. Hershey found a way to pivot. They found a way to transition in the series. As enthusiastic as we are now, and I'll turn this question to you, Tim, are you still kind of remembering a little bit what happened last year? And so is your optimism also a little cautious because of that? Yeah, for sure, right? You take a 2-0 series lead, then you're up 2-0 in game seven. It, it all changed like that in a snap of a finger. So, And it's still the Hershey Bears. They've got the, the moxie, the background, the head coach, the goalie. Yeah, I mean, would I be surprised if it's done in five and it's you know done here Saturday night? I wouldn't be surprised. But I did say Hershey in six from the – or uh, Coachella in six from the jump. So uh, I'm going to stick to that. It, win three in a row against anybody, that's hard. It doesn't really matter who – who the teams are. So yeah, I'm optimistic, but certainly there's some caution there. You got some PTSD from, from last season. <laughs> Andrew, John, are you a believer in ghosts or demons of the past? Huh. You know, I think, uh, I don't think so much about last season this, this, you know, these two teams are similar, but they're still different than last year's teams. But I will say, um, you know, going back to what Patrick was saying, I think that the Firebirds really benefited from, and I said this before the series that the Firebirds would steal one in Hershey because the Bears were coming off that brutal series against Cleveland. And, and I didn't think they would be ready in a 48 hour turnaround uh, to start the Calder Cup finals. Of course, I think getting one there was just huge for the Firebirds. I don't know if it I I wouldn't, again, be surprised if they finished in five. But this I, I just don't think Hershey is going to go down that easy. So. My original prediction was Firebirds in six. I'm going to stick to that as well. I do think it will go back to Hershey as, as crazy as that sounds. Just a few hours after last night's game when the Firebirds just looked <laughs> so good at home. Hard to envision them losing a game at home, uh, to be completely honest. But then again, I mean, this Hershey team is is a great team. Even if they are a little banged up, uh, they can find a way to win. And so I don't, I wouldn't doubt that they would do that uh, for one of these games in uh in the Coachella Valley. Patrick Williams, is it ringing familiar to you, this not dissimilar visit that we had just about the same time last year? Enthusiasm was flying high, and then everything changed. Is that something that you're keeping in mind as you put together your your features at AHL.com? Yeah. Uh, I mean, for one, I think Hershey's earned the benefit of the doubt, right? Like, you know, when you win the cup, uh, you bring back a, a good chunk of that team, right? Like, um, you know, they're, 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 they're the champ until, until proven otherwise, right. Until someone comes and takes it from them. Uh, so that's the first thing. I think the second thing is with Todd Nelson there behind the bench. I mean, you know, he always seems to have, just when you think he's like kind of like run out of tricks in his, in his bag, like he finds another one, right. Like he finds those buttons to push and uh, he's done that time and time again with this group. And it's a proud group, right? Like, you know, you got guys like Mac, and Becky, on me, right. And like, uh, even the guys that are that are hurt right now are still, you know, they're around the team, their presence, right? And you know, they, there's that that winning mentality in Hershey, right? Like they expect to win every single night. Uh, um, sometimes that rubs opponents and, and other fan bases the wrong way, but I mean, that's that's what's been successful for them for so long, and uh, they are definitely up against it. Uh, there's no question right now, and, uh, but uh, you know. One thing I've noticed talking to coaches around the league is there's this like this phrase that seems to be coming into vogue a little bit more uh, that, uh, you know, in the playoffs, every game is its own game, right? Like, you know, sort of discounting the idea of momentum one game to the next. And that, uh, you know, sure, Coachella Valley, first three games, it looked great, especially game three. But, you know, game four is a new one. Game five is a new one. 
all you gotta do is get you know one or two lucky bounces if you're Hershey, right? Like get a couple calls your way, you know, maybe you know Chris Jager, you know, ha- has a, has a has an off night, you know, any number of things that can happen, right? As we saw last year, right? Like, you know, I mean, we were kind of thinking that was might be a sweep last year, and uh, we got something very different, right? Even and right up until Game Seven, Game Seven. Up until what the five minute mark of the second period, uh, it was looking like, hey, okay, Coachella's finally, finally tamed the beast here, and they they had the series under control. Then Hershey, lo and behold, two goals, right? You know, one after another, and they come back and they win the whole thing. So uh, yeah, th- this is these are two teams that they're definitely at odds with each other, but you know they're they're similar in some ways. Like they, they just know how to push each other's buttons. Uh, they know how to kind of get under each other's skin and. You know, it's it's this chess match right now where you know, okay, you make a move, I make a move, and, and back and forth. And um, I think at this point, it, it uh, it's it's too early to to really count on anyone out. Uh, at, you know, going forward here. A couple more for each of you, gents, and both of them are uh, quick hitters as we move along. So many great storylines. I'll come right back to you here, by the way, Patrick. In that we've got the rematch, the desert versus dessert, the oldest versus newest, the the vengeance factor. I don't know for me. I mean, I just cannot overlook the fact that getting out of the desert with a Calder Cup uh, and the banner hung aloft at Akershire Arena is just the ultimate mic drop for Dan Bilesmo's return yeah. to the NHL and going to head coach of the Seattle Kraken. To me, it's it still might be and the championship is the is the top storyline, but that might be like one A. Absolutely. Well, and remember too, a lot of these guys, they, you know, this is an open, open audition for them. I mean, this is it's a chance to really leave a great impression going into the summertime on uh, somebody that you hope will be your future head coach in Seattle next year. And um, yeah, so that's the first part. And the second part with Biosma is I noticed uh, dur- during his press conference in Seattle when they made the announcement, you know, it, it, somewhat unprompted, he brought up uh, how much he wants to win a Calder Cup. And, you know, that really stood out because, I mean, a lot of times, like, when people get that NHL opportunity, it's like they leave the AHL in the dust, right? Like, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah, I think he I think he meant it. Like, he really wants it. Like, he, he's, he's obviously got such an accomplished resume. This is the one gap on his resume. And I don't know if he would ever admit it, but I think last year's series really still burns with him, right? Like, as with a lot of players, like, that was just such a, a gut-wrenching way to lose. Uh, you know, like, and I think uh, they, they've just had that, that festering now for a year. Uh, so I think for him, that's a great storyline. Andrew, John, your thoughts on that? Is Dan heading north or northwest with a uh, Calder Cup title in tow? Is that the top storyline or is it like kind of 1A for you? It's, I think it's 1A. Um, yeah, because I think, I think, uh, the, I think really the biggest would be, you know, the fact that this team that in the desert, California desert, that no one thought would ever have any fans uh, come to its games uh, has won. Well, you know, could, uh, you know, if they win a Calder Cup, that would be a huge story um, for the success of this this uh, team early on. And it would, it would, you know, be like the first West Coast team to win the Calder Cup, right? So, I mean, this is all significant. I think Dan going up to Seattle uh though to to touch on on that storyline and and Patrick did mention it this 100% is a priority for Dan because those of us and I know Patrick was there and and Tim and Judd you guys were all there at the end of last season when they lost game 7 we were like uh he was you know just super uh, uh sad about the moment and disconsolate sure and he said in that moment that this is going to like stick in his, I'm paraphrasing. He's this is going to like really stick in his craw for a long, long time. And we believed it. I mean, there was no one there. I can imagine who thought that he was going to be over that in a week. Uh, and then we circled back with him at some point this season. Uh, maybe it was the start of the postseason, And he pretty much confirmed that it still burns on him uh, that they lost game seven and now he knows that this is going to be his last series with this team. So it's it, if it wasn't already important, I think it's it's it, absolutely important now that he walks away from this team because this has been such a special ride, not just for the players but for Dan. He's he's made that very clear 
that this yep. two year period with Coach Eli Firebirds has been something really special to not end it with a Calder Cup. Uh, <laughs> when you're in the finals for the second consecutive <laughs> year, would would just be totally unacceptable for him. Tim O'Brien, I take it to you for your own storytelling. Are you juggling, wrestling with deciding amongst what is the biggest headline here? Yeah, I, I, I'm leaning more towards Andrew. I think the story is the culmination of these two years. This, I think it's no secret the coaching staff is different next year. The, the core is going to be different. This is drastically going to be a different team. And I think uh, this would close the book on, on, you know, on what this started, what, what it feels like. Everything is coming into one and what has happened here over the last uh, two years and uh, but, but not to, to sleep on, on Dan either, because, you know, again, he's made it very clear. It's a priority. He's made it very clear that this other than Stanley cup would be the highlight of, of his career. He made the changes professionally and personally to get back to this point. Uh, he, he loves it here. I don't think it's lip service. Um, and, and you know, win, lose or draw. I had a moment yesterday. I was standing there watching him on the bench and Saturday night is whether it's a championship or, or going back to Hershey, it's his last time on the bench here. So um, he won't talk about it probably, but because there's a, there's a cup to win, but uh, yeah, I sure, sure as heck thought about it. <laughs> Final one, we'll go snake style, kind of a quick hitter stick with you on this, Tim. You guys have all kind of discussed a prediction or your thoughts, but let's just, let's just kind of cement. Let's, let's quantify here the importance from the Firebirds perspective of closing this out on Saturday night here in the desert, here on our home ice. It really is the fitting ending, and we do not want this series to go back to Hershey. Can you quantify that? And, again, do you think that will happen, Tim? I don't. I, I still have Firebirds and Six going east is harder than, than coming west. That's a hard building to play in, and uh, you don't, you just don't want to get it back there. Momentum shifts that way. Andrew John, same question to you, sir. Yeah, again, I you know, Firebirds and Six, but – uh, I got to say that would be pretty devastating if they have to go back to Hershey, that, that could change the incomplete, that can completely change the series. And, uh, you know, as we saw the Firebirds lose all three games in Hershey last year, uh, it's a tough place for them to play. Uh, I would not feel comfortable if I were the Firebirds, if that were the situation. Patrick Williams, we want to close this thing out here in the desert, not come back to where you are in Hershey, Pennsylvania. It's going to be quite a party if they can get it done out here at five. Do you think the birds can do it or are they coming back in your direction? It's going to be tough. Uh, I think Andrew mentioned earlier, anytime you have to win three games in a row against the same opponent in a series, especially one as good as Hershey. Um, you know, I think that's what makes game four so huge, right? Like if you could get Hershey down three, one, okay, then you might be able to break them. Uh, and then come out and just, you know, attack them in game five. If not, like if you give it, you let that door open even a little bit for Hershey, they're going to, they're going to kick it down. And, it, and then, you know, like, like it's, it's been said, if you go back for game six to Hershey, you're really playing with fire at that point. Um, you know, you're, you're going into building that would be absolutely, you know, amped up uh, beyond anything. Uh, and like you said, it's, it's a long trip. Hershey has to fly back no matter what, right? So, like, they don't mind if they bring uh, the Firebirds along with them uh, for the ride. So, uh, yeah, you don't want that if, if, if you're if you're Coachella, but it may come down to that just by the nature of you know what is still two for the most part evenly matched teams and the fact that you know beating one team three times in a row it, that that that's a tough. One. Gents, it's been a straight up gas of the series thus far. I look forward to more excitement to come Thursday night in game four. Patrick Williams, the AHL.com, Andrew John of the Desert Sun, Tim O'Brien, NBC Palm Springs. He's also your in arena host at Akershire. Thank you so much for your time, gents. Appreciate it. Let's enjoy the rest of the Calder Cup Championship Finals. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys. See ya. Take care. All right, Firebird Squawk. It's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Fire and Ice Podcast presented by Desert Willow Golf Resort. So appreciative of your time, your interest, your ears, your enthusiasm, your ongoing support of this endeavor. Exciting times in Firebird's country. Let's embrace that. Special times here in the Coachella Valley. Let's embrace that. Occasionally tense and or stressful times. Well, let's embrace that too. 
Two years, two trips to these Calder Cup Championship Finals, two years playing until the summer solstice, two years playing further than at least the NBA Finals, and possibly, if not likely, the Stanley Cup Finals as well. That's how much hockey we've enjoyed here in the Coachella Valley. Could be some point in the future, I don't know. Hopefully it's a long time away, six years, 13 years, 19 years, I don't know. Or we might look back on this and say, remember when the Firebirds started their franchise history by going to the Calder Cup Championship Finals in back-to-back years and facing the Hershey Bears twice? Point being, I suppose there's been so much great hockey to enjoy across these two seasons. There's been so many great people to enjoy, as evidence, I hope and trust, by this Fire and Ice podcast. So many great people to enjoy across these two seasons. Let's just soak it all in. Let's just take it all in, the bitter and the better, and let's see how these chips fall. All right, equal appreciation in this episode goes to the awesome media roundtable and the trio of guests, Tim O'Brien, Patrick Williams, and Andrew John. Great to have all these gents back. Added gratitude goes to the sponsor of this endeavor, Desert Willow Golf Resort. Get those tee times online today for the Mountain View course. Firecliff course over there. Yeah, they got 36 holes. Firecliff. Again, currently undergoing a summer renovation. Get those tee times online for the Mountain View at DesertWillow.com. And when you're on there poking around, be sure to check out the awesome and on-site Palm Desert Golf Academy for all your swing instruction and tutelage needs. You're going to want to make it a great putt-to-puck day. Desert Willow over to a Birds Calder Cup Championship playoff game at Eckershire Arena. It's just about three miles away. Quick revisit of the Calder Cup Championship Finals schedule. Game four, this Thursday, June 20, Hershey at Coachella Valley. That's a 7 p.m. start time. Game five, that will decidedly be played this Saturday, June 22nd, Hershey at CV. Make a note, that's not a 7 p.m. start time. Rather, Saturday is a 6 p.m. start time. Ultimately, if needed, if necessary, the series would then return east to Hershey, Pennsylvania for game six, which would be played Next Monday, June 24, CV at Hershey. That's at 4 p.m. Pacific start time. A deciding game seven, if needed, would be played next Wednesday, June 26. Coachella Valley at Hershey, another 4 p.m. puck drop. Certainly hope to see you out at Akershire Arena for the Birds playoff games this week, Thursday and Saturday. Get those tickets online at cvfirebirds.com or via the Firebirds app at Firebirds. Put on a great show in that game three. Just an absolutely awesome, exciting, electric atmosphere. Certainly anticipate and expect much, much more as the Birds play games four and five to close out their season at Akershire Arena. And heck, we'll see. Perhaps close out the season as a whole. All right, friends. Thank you again all for your time and for tuning in. Remember, as always, one valley, one team, rising together.